Howdy, howdy, folks. It's Donnie here. And in today's edition of the Linux Security Report, we have this article from Slashdot. After eight years of remote access Trojan attacks, can we still say that Linux is secure? Now, I know all the Linux fanboys are out there yelling at me, saying, well, of course Linux is secure. I mean, after all, it's not Windows. Well, listen, the reality, folks, is that the only operating system you'll ever find that is guaranteed to be 100% secure is installed on a computer which never gets turned on, okay? I mean, I don't care what you do with a computer, with any operating system, whether it's Windows or Linux or anything else, you have to assume that people can still break into it, okay? That's just the way it is. But the thing of it is, though, you have to configure your machine in such a way that it's so hard to break into that it's just not worth the effort. And so here, and, and also remote access Trojan attack. Well, what's that? Well, that's when somebody comes in and plants malware on a computer, which grants them a way to just log back into that computer normally. And, you know, with, without having to jump through the hoops of actually breaking in again. So, and this is called a, an advanced persistent threat group because it's going to be there all the time. And so, so anyway, this has to do with a report uh, from the BlackBerry organization about how they've been infiltrating critical Linux servers for at least eight years. What's the lesson to be learned? Well, Linux security founder Dave Reske argues that it may be easy to blame the rise in attacks targeting Linux in recent years on security vulnerabilities in the operating system as a whole, but this is simply not the truth. The majority of exploits on Linux systems can be attributed to misconfigured servers and poor administration. And really... It, it, it's the same as Windows. I mean, it's you, you got to also configure that. No matter what operating system you're running on your servers or in your corporate environment, you need to make sure that it's configured properly in order to keep out the bad guys. So, and also over here, some experts argue that it is the popularity of Linux that makes it a target. Joe McManus, director of security at Canonical, explains Linux and particular, particularly Ubuntu are incredibly secure systems. But that being said, it is their popularity that makes them a target. And Ian Thornton Trump, a threat intelligence expert, and the CISO at SciJax adds from an economic and missions perspective, it makes sense for a threat actor to invest in open source skills for flexibility and the ability to target the systems where the good stuff is happening. And despite the increasing number of threats targeting Linux systems, there's still a sound argument for an inherent security of Linux, which can be attributed to the core fundamentals of open source. And it just goes on there to tell about how, yeah, open source, hey, everybody can look at it and look for security bu problems, security bugs. But these attacks do, however, serve as a much needed wake up call for the security community that more needs to be done to protect Linux servers. Blackberry's report reveals that security solutions and defensive coverage available within the Linux environments is immature at best. Endpoint protection, detection, and response products are inadequately utilized, utilized by too many Linux users and endpoint solutions available for Linux systems are often insufficient in combating advanced exploits. Eric Cornelius, Chief Product Officer at BlackBerry evaluates security products and services that support Linux. Offerings that might detect and give us insight into a threat like this are relatively lacking compared to other operating systems and security research about APT, Advanced Persistent Threats, Use of Linux malware is also relatively sparse. 
Okay, and I think, uh, yeah, that's it for that article. But anyway, uh, let's go back here. Okay, uh, this guy here. Linux, particularly Ubuntu, are incredibly secure systems. Okay, particularly Ubuntu. Yeah, this guy works for Canonical, the publisher of Ubuntu. <laughs> so, of course he would say that. But uh, my own opinion, in a lot of ways, Red Hat uh, systems are a lot more secure than Ubuntu out of the box, right? So, uh, so but anyway, still the overall point. That Linux, yes, inherently it is secure. And it is immune to different types of threats that are uh, that that will affect Windows machines. For example, with Windows, you can get well, not so bad with Windows 10 anymore, but with Windows 7 and before, I mean, you could infect your machine, just completely screw it up, just by visiting a website that has viruses on it. It would just automatically download those viruses and hey, your machine would be toast, right? <laughs> You'd have to jump through all types of hoops in order to clean that up. Linux, you don't have that problem, all right? Linux, there, as far as anyone can tell, there are no viruses that are that impact on Linux, right? But there are other types of malware. Viruses are only one type of malware. There are other types. And the remote access trojans are one of those types and so we can go over here as well it's not just remote access trojans here attacks on supercomputers were crypto miners and of course most almost all supercomputers in the world run linux right and the thing here about this, right, crypto miners, remote access Trojans, just completely different categories. With a remote access Trojan, you actually have to have root privileges or an attacker has to gain root privileges somehow in order to install that malware. Either that or somehow trick the end user into installing that malware with his own root privileges, right? But crypto mining, hey, you don't even need root privileges to install that. I mean, all you got to do is get into somebody nor somebody's normal user account and just plant the crypto mining uh, software on that, and it's going to run just fine with just normal user privileges, right? And, uh, and the thing about the crypto mining is uh, the, 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 the software in itself isn't really malicious. All it does is mine crypto coins, probably Monero, which can be done with a CPU, and it sends those coins to the attackers who planted that malware, right? So it's not really doing anything harmful in and of itself, other than the fact that it's putting an extra load on those computers, slowing them down, and making them run hotter, making them run, uh, making them consume more energy, and all that, right? So, uh, so yeah, that's still a bad thing. And how did they do that? Well, they exploited a secure shell connection, which academic users used to log into the system remotely, and once inside the attackers appear to have deployed cryptocurrency mining malware. All right, now notice there, secure shell, all right? And secure shell, when they say secure shell, they mean that the connection is encrypted. But ironically, out of the box, secure shell not really secure for a couple of different problems, uh, for a couple of different reasons. For one thing, all right, a lot of Linux distros, Secure Shell is set up to allow the root user to log in. And also by default, Secure Shell is set up to allow 
users to log in with the username and password, and the username and password will get sent across the network. And then add to that the fact that in a lot of cases, passwords are incredibly weak and easy to guess. And that combination of things has come together in the past, in which would just create havoc, right? So uh, several years ago, in Southeast Asia someplace, there was a, a big problem. A bunch of Linux servers got infected be with botnet malware because the machines were configured to allow root user login via secure shell, and the passwords were incredibly weak. All right? But in this case here, with the mining malware, as I said, you, know, you don't even have to have root user access. All you got to do is, is just access somebody's normal user account. And again, if, it's, if the normal user account is set up to allow access via username and password, yes, that's going to be a problem. Somebody can break in. Somebody can guess the password using password cracking software such as Hydra or whatever else. And once they're in, they can go ahead and plant that mining malware without ever having to worry about getting root privileges. And so there's just a lot of little things like that, right? Which can really, really cause problems if you don't have things configured properly. So in this case, for example, if you're running a supercomputer or a server, anything that can be accessed from the internet that you need to have uh, set up with secure shell access so you can log in to it and perform maintenance or whatever, then you need to jump through a few hoops in order to reconfigure the secure shell in order to prevent the root user from logging in and also to make sure that nobody can log in with username and password. Use key exchange instead. It's a lot more secure and it's really easy to set up. And and then I mean, other, other little things, too, like uh, uh, you've also got the problem, too, with phishing, all right? Now, uh, traditionally, you always hear about defense in depth. You have a firewall at the edge between the Internet and your demilitarized zone, have another firewall between the demilitarized zone and your LAN, and, and, just, and then have the firewall on your host machines and all that, well, yeah, that's good, okay? You still want to have all that stuff. But the thing is, that doesn't tell the whole story anymore because now you have phishing attacks and, you, you, and social engineering attacks. And you know, an attacker can just trick somebody into doing all the work for them. They can trick somebody into installing a malware, trick somebody into giving out their usernames and passwords, right? So that's something else you got to look out for. And also, you've got the problem with insider threats. And a couple of days ago, I saw on a uh, uh, one of my crypto coin faucets that I like to frequent, that I like to play with sometimes, <laughs> that, that uh, yeah, they were down for a couple of days, right? Nobody could access it. Well, they came back up, and the, the faucet owner says, hey, uh, a member of our team just, we, we found out that he got in and he stole like $2,000 worth of Dogecoin. And then he decided to delete the whole server. And so it took him a couple days to get back up and running. So yeah, insider threat. So that's a case that where maybe somebody had too much in the way of administrative permissions, right? So when you set up your user accounts, you also got to make sure that nobody has more permissions than what they absolutely need to do their jobs, all right? So anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much it for that. That's kind of my rant. This is kind of like uh, general principles. And, you know, those of you who have been with my channel for a long time, you know, know I go on, off on these rants every once in a while, right? Because it's something that really, really bugs me. 
It's easy to do. I mean, it's, it's, oh, okay, not really, really easy, maybe, but it's not that hard either to set up basic security to make, to help prevent people from breaking into your systems, to help prevent insiders from doing malicious stuff, and and also, uh, you know, for the phishing and social engineering, well, best I can tell you there is, well, first off, uh, again, make sure that people don't have more permissions than what they absolutely need to do their jobs so that they, they won't be able to do as much damage if they do install some sort of a malware that they get tricked into installing. And also education, you know, educate the users. And you also need to know a little bit about threat hunting. Okay, now threat hunting, oh, that's a whole big topic by itself. There are whole courses and whole books about it. But go online and uh, you can find uh, the courses that, that teach that. Black Hills uh, Information Security is a good one. But uh, anyway, also, here's something else that can help you out. And this is where we have a word from my sponsor, which is me and my book, Mastering Linux Security and Hardening Second Edition. And all the stuff I talked about and a whole lot more, I can help you out here with that. All right. So uh, with this book, it's going to show you about how to set up user accounts securely, how to set up administrative permission securely and firewall technologies. I cover all the firewall technologies, the old IP tables, the newfangled NF tables, uncomplicated firewall, firewall D, all that, right? So anyway, uh, so be sure to check it out. And also there's a little bit about threat hunting in there. Not a whole lot, because I said that requires an entire book, an entire course unto itself. But hey, uh, there's a little bit in there, a little bit about auditing and, uh, you know, what to look for in system logs, things like that, All right? So anyway, be sure to check it out. I'll have the purchase links in the video description below, and be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.